type of spiral of dots for two months, three months, how long would that be engaging for? And we don't know the answer to that. Um, we act, we're, our, uh, Dr. DeThorne had a master's student who did two uh, clinical projects using our visualizations. And what we saw was these kids stayed engaged with the uh, visual and auditory feedback over an entire uh, academic semester. So they were still engaging with the software after, I guess that's roughly three months, um, which was really exciting. So I don't know if that gets to the heart of your question, but that's the data that we have that I can't answer you about. It was really, really interesting, and I can't thank you enough for coming out and saying that children have preferences and backing that up with some data. That's really important. Uh, I wondered how you define low functioning, uh, what, what measure you use for picking out those students. Sure. Um, so how do we define low functioning? Well, it, it, this was a pilot study, so our goal was get the kids that we could. Um, and so we defined low functioning as children who were not using vocalizations or any other form of communication to communicate. So they might be using the, uh, you know, pulling mom's hand and pulling her towards the fridge if they want food. So they might be communicating in that way, but they weren't using speech, they weren't using an AAC device, they weren't using sign. So these kids were, for all intents and purposes, non-communicative. Um, and that's how we define low functioning for this experiment. For our follow-up experiments, we're using the Goldman Fristo uh, assessment, as well as the MacArthur Bates uh, vocabulary assessment. So we're actually going to be plotting their language and their expressive and receptive at the start of the experiment and then at the end of the experiment to see if there were actual changes that came out. Okay, so it sounds like you're actually going to go on and look and see if the effect of this kind of intervention uh, not only makes your speech longer or whatever, but also causes you to communicate, is that? That's for our next experiment. Okay. Um, Dr. DeThorne's master's student who did the, the two clinical settings, um, we compared this computer setup to a mirror, which is a traditional uh, SLP, spe uh, speech uh, language pathologist tool. And what we saw was it was as effective as using uh, a mirror in the clinical setting. And this is for software that wasn't targeting pitch or volume or something explicit. So we're, that, that plus this study combined made us say, well, if we target something, maybe we can be more effective than a mirror. And so we'll, we're going from there. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks. Um, I was wondering, um, do you have any plans to maybe try to filter the audio to make it so that it's, it's non-responsive to uh, non-speech-like vocalization to encourage more speech-like vocalization? Uh, yes. Uh, it's, it's a very hard problem. The biggest problem that we're running into is uh, how, how to differentiate between sounds that are in the environment and sounds that are generated by the child. Because ideally, we would like to filter out things that are in the environment, hitting the table, hitting the computer, things like that. Um, basically, the, 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 the technique that we're using right now is a bandpass filter and just filtering out things that are below and above certain frequency ranges and just focusing on stuff that probably is speech or generated by, by the human vocal cords. But that's the best idea that we have right now. <coughs> yep. also involved in the American Sign Language program at the university, and I've, I've noticed that a lot of the students are special ed students that want to get sign language, learn sign language, and, uh, and they're going into autism. And so I'm wondering, if, have you considered other languages besides just English as a possible communication avenue beyond, you know, for these children? And could you do a study in that? Um, in terms of using our software, I, I, it's not limited to English. I'm sure you could use it for French or German or any of the uh, Western languages. But in, but in terms of using sign or using an AAC device, um, the, our uh, Dr. Dr. DeThorne, who is a uh, speech language pathologist, she, her, her opinion is, and, it, and we share it, is we want these kids to communicate. If it's through voice, if it's through an AAC, if it's through sign, it doesn't matter. Um, so my dissertation work is focusing on just uh, vocal expression, but she, in her uh, clinical settings that we're going to, we have and we're continuing to go through, are incorporating sign as well as AAC devices and picture pointing and 
many, many other, other avenues. And when she publishes her work, she'll show the, she's recording the, the use of AAC devices and sign in the setting, as well as use of voice, use of the, the software, and things like that. And by the way, that was a wonderful presentation. Oh, thank you.